All right, everybody, buckle up, because today we are diving headfirst into a management model that's jam-packed with golden nuggets of wisdom. Ooh, I like the sound of golden nuggets already. And trust me, this one doesn't disappoint. It's Guy W. Wallace's Management Areas of Performance Model, or AOPs for short. Okay, AOPs, I've heard whispers of this one. What's the deal? So, full disclosure, the book itself is a bit dense, but it's the kind of dense that's worth wading through. It's not just theory, it's chock full of frameworks and templates you can actually use. Music to my ears. I'm all about practicality when it comes to management advice. Oh, you, me both. And listen to this back in 07 when it first came out. Darlene Van Time, who knows a thing or two about performance management, called it a tremendous performance management tool. Can't argue with that. So right? she's got a point. And get this, Mark Graham Brown, who's basically a walking, talking encyclopedia of management books, said it was like a breath of fresh air compared to all those generic leadership programs that promise you the moon but leave you empty handed. Yeah, I've definitely been there too many times. Exactly. Yeah. So before we really crack this one open, I'm curious, what are you hoping to discover today? What management puzzle are you trying to solve? So, you know, when I first stumbled upon this model, I was expecting like rigid categories, managers do this and only this. But honestly, it surprised me. It's way more uh, fluid. OK, you've piqued my interest. Spill the tea. What's this fluidity all about? <laughs> yeah. So Wallace, he, he lays out these four levels of management, right? Uh -huh. But and this is key. He's super clear that they're all intertwined. It's not like a static hierarchical pyramid. It's more like, hmm, imagine a jazz quartet, you know. OK, I'm digging the analogy. Each musician have their own thing going on, their own instrument, but it's how they riff off each other, that back and forth, that really makes the magic happen. Exactly. You've got that managerial leadership setting the groove, the overall vision, your band leader, if you will. Then there's the managerial core, those folks in the trenches managing people and projects. Think of them as the drummer keeping that steady beat. Okay, and if we're sticking with this music metaphor, I'm guessing the individual contributor level is where those individual melodies and solos come in. You got it. Each person bringing their unique sound to the mix. But here's where it gets even more interesting. There's this fourth level that often flies under the radar, management support. Mm. They're like the sound engineer, making sure everyone has what they need to shine, the right equipment, the right acoustics, that kind of thing. Wow. That's a really powerful way to think about it. We tend to focus on those star performers or the yeah. conductor leading the orchestra, but we often forget about those essential behind the scenes roles that make it all possible. 100%. And the real sweet spot is when all of these levels are grooving together, you know. Mm. But what really resonated with me was Wallace's breakdown of the why behind each level. He calls them utilities. Utilities. OK, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Tell me more about these utilities. What kind of practical magic are we talking about here? Well, for starters, the model gives you this really clear framework for defining what good management looks like. And not in some vague, generic sense, but tailored to your specific organization and what it's trying to achieve. So no more cookie cutter job descriptions. You're saying this model helps you define success for each management role based on the unique DNA of that organization. You nailed it. And that brings us to the second utility, which is where those enablers we talked about earlier come in. Ah, yes, the enablers. Those management superpowers. We can't forget those. They're kind of important, right? Totally. Once you pinpoint the knowledge, skills, attributes, and values that drive success at each level, you can really start to strategically target development efforts, make smarter hiring decisions, even restructure teams for maximum impact. It's pretty powerful stuff. Okay, I can see why you're so geeked out about this model. This is where things start to get really exciting for me. Once you know what those enablers are, you can start to figure out your own strengths and weaknesses as a manager. You know, where you excel, where you might need a bit of a boost. Precisely. And that's the beauty of Wallace's third utility, self-development planning. He literally hands you a roadmap for using this model as a tool for personal and professional growth. I love that. It's like having a personalized management development plan right there at your <laughs> fingertips. What's not to love about that? But OK, I'm curious about this fourth utility, you know, the one about HR systems. How does that fit into all of this? It feels a little, I don't know, out of sync with the rest. OK, yeah. So this fourth utility, it's about integrating HR systems. I'll be honest, when I first read that, I was like, Ugh, HR, really? That's kind of buzzkill. But then I thought about it. And you know what? Those generic performance reviews, 
the ones that feel like they were written by a committee of robots, nobody likes those. Oh, tell me about it. It's like, <laughs> what's the point, right? It's also surface level. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't really help anyone. Exactly. It's just checking boxes. So how does this AOP's model shake things up on the HR front? Give me the good stuff. All right. So imagine this. All those insights we've been geeking out about, the different levels of management, those enablers, the nitty gritty of what success looks like in a specific role. Imagine weaving that into the very fabric of your HR processes. Okay, I'm picturing it instead of generic one size fits all HR practices. We're talking about using the AOP's model to create something more customized, more tailored to how the organization actually functions. Am I getting warm? You are so warm. Think about it. You could draft job descriptions that actually reflect the complexity and nuance of each management role and training programs. Boom. Laser focused on those specific skills and knowledge gaps that the AOP's model helps you identify. Even performance management ditch the standardized forms and build the system that revolves around those enablers. Now, that's what I call a game changer. Right. It's about moving away from those vague, subjective evaluations and replacing them with something far more concrete, something directly tied to the work itself and the specific competencies that drive success. Bingo. And the best part is this isn't just prying in the sky thinking. Wallace talks about this company, right? Yeah. They use the AOP's model to revamp their entire performance management system. They ditched the generic evaluations and went all in on those enablers. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. What happened? Well, let's just say they were pretty happy with the results. We're talking about a significant boost in employee engagement, a noticeable uptick in productivity, and get this, even their retention rates improved. How's that for putting theory into practice? All right, you convinced me. That's impressive. This has been, wow, really eye-opening. We've covered a lot of ground from the theoretical foundations of this model all the way to how it plays out in the real world. It's been a blast. And you know what blows my mind? This model came out almost 20 years ago, but it's still so relevant today. It just proves that some things about management, they're timeless. Absolutely. It's all about understanding those different levels of management, how they all work together, and of course, those all important enablers. I don't know about you, but I've got a lot to think about after this deep dive. And for you, dear listener, here's something to chew on. Think about your own management style. Which of these enablers are you naturally drawn to? And which ones might need a little more TLC? Don't be afraid to really use this model as a tool for reflection, you know, to really dig deep and see where you can grow. It might just unlock a whole new level of leadership potential that you never even knew you had. Until next time, happy managing.